Good morning, and welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I'm your worship associate this morning, along with Camille Harris. We are joined by pianist Forrest Howell and Keith Ensroff, who will lead our hymns, with technical support by Andrew Schreck and Drika DeGraff. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and later posted on Facebook. BUC is a spiritual home for all people of goodwill. The lay leaders of this congregation have worked hard over many years to earn special designations from the Unitarian Universalist Association. In 1994, we became a welcoming congregation, a term that means we are committed to being intentionally inclusive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and families. We are also a green sanctuary congregation, which is a similar program for environmental justice work in a congregation. Our commitment to both of these programs was renewed this year. And although there is no such designation for racial justice, we are deeply committed to this work as well. After the service, we invite you to stay for a virtual coffee hour. You will be randomly sorted into breakout groups and we hope that you'll participate in this opportunity to connect with others. If you're worshiping with us for the first time today, we extend a special welcome to you. And we hope that you'll stay after the service and get to know us. We have two announcements this morning. The first being, there will be no Monday morning coffee with the minister meeting tomorrow, August 24th. Reverend Mandy will be on study leave. On Thursday, August 27th, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, volunteers are needed for an outdoor workday on the church campus. Activities will include moving 20 yards of mulch into the playground, trimming hedges, trees, and shrubs, and doing some general campus cleanup of weeds and trash. Contact Paul Plant to volunteer. Our service this morning is on the first UU principle. Thank you. 
Camille, you're on. Thank you. In solidarity with Unitarian Universalists throughout the world, we now light our chalice, the symbol of our faith. We light this chalice today in honor of the Unitarian Universalist first principle to affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person. We recognize that these are not just words to be spoken. Instead, they call us out of our comfort zones into an ever deepening commitment a commitment we make to the rights of all whose inherent worth and dignity are denied, diminished, or destroyed by systems of oppression. And they call us into the practice of looking into our own hearts with courage and honesty. Please join in singing Hymn number 347, Gather the Spirit. The words are posted on your screen. Spirit, harvest the power, our separate fires will kindle one flame. With this, the mystery of this hour, our trails in this light appear all the same. Gather in peace, gather in thanks, gather in sympathy and them gather in hope compassion and strength gather to celebrate once again gather the spirit of heart and mind seeds for the sowing are laid in store nurtured in love and conscience refined with body and spirit united once more gather in peace gather in thanks gather in sympathy now and then gather in hope compassion and strength gather to celebrate once again. Gather the spirit growing in all, drawn by the moon and fed by the sun. Winter to spring and summer to fall, the chorus of life resounding as one. Gather in peace, Gather in thanks, gather to sympathy now and then. Gather in hope, compassion and strength, gather to celebrate once again. Our opening words this morning are from In Faith by Sunshine Jeremiah Wolf. This is a congregation that gathers in faith, not in faith in one religion or one God in any one way. We gather in the faith and power of diversity, the power of love, and the hope of a world transformed by our care. We gather in faith in ourselves and those around us, not a faith that requires perfection or rightness,
Camille, I think that we could give the offering now. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Abby. We are stewards of this community and of our beautiful campus. Even when we're not worshiping on site, we're still responsible for expenses like utilities, lawn maintenance, and monthly leasing fees for the copier and postage meter. And we pay for Zoom too. Um, this is a house of memory and hope, of love and justice. Let there be an offering to support this beloved community. Your contributions can be sent using Venmo, username at BUCMI, or through our website. Giving, giving through either platform is easy and free. You can also put a check in the mail to us. I ask you to consider how much you've relied on BUC in the last three months and do what you can to support our good work. Please give generously. We have come to the time in our service that we set aside for prayer, reflection, and meditation. We will begin with the sharing of joys and sorrows from our community. We begin with a note of concern from Mary Samuel. Jean Simmons broke her left arm in a fall and had to spend some time in the hospital and nursing home. She is now recuperating successfully at home and an expression of concern from Kelly Taylor. My biopsy came back positive for metastatic breast cancer. I will be having chemotherapy once my team puts a plan in place. Any and all prayers are welcomed. I invite you to move further with me into a spirit of reflection. Let us now enter into a spirit of prayer and meditation guided by the words of Thich Nhat Hanh. Let us be at peace with our bodies and our minds. Let us return to ourselves and become holy ourselves. Let us be aware of the source of being common to us all and to all living things. Evoking the presence of the great compassion, let us fill our hearts with our own compassion toward ourselves and towards all living beings. Let us pray that we ourselves cease to be the cause of suffering to each other with humility, with awareness of the existence of life and of the sufferings that are going on around us, let us practice the establishment of peace in our hearts and on earth. Amen. Return again, return. 
return again. Return to the home of your soul. Return again. Return again. Return to the home of your soul. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are. Born and be born again. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Here is a portion of an excerpt from Kevin Tarsa, Psalm 23, for this moment. May I remember in this tender moment that love is my guide, always, shepherding me toward ways of openness and compassion. I have what I need, really, with love at my side, above me, below me, in front of me, behind me, inside every cell of me, love infused everywhere. Just when the weight of the world I inhabit threatens to drop me in place and press my hope down into the ground beneath me, love invites me to rest for a gentle while and leads the center of my soul to the quiet, still, restoring waters nearby that somehow I had not noticed. And so love quietly sets me once again on its tender and demanding path. seven principles are tricky for being a liberal faith that has no prescribed creed our seven principles are quite demanding specifically our first principle the inherent worth and dignity of every person asks us to recognize that every person has inherent worth and dignity now this is not a be nice to everyone speech in fact, the first principle does not even require of us to assume that people are good or well-intentioned. It only asks that before we make judgments, we remember that just like ourselves, those around us have worth and dignity. In 1961, after the consolidation of the Unitarians and Universalists, six principles were adopted. In some form or fashion, they appear in our current principles, but the six principles are different for a number of reasons. What is now the first principle was then the third. It went to affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality, the dignity of man, and the use of the democratic method in human relationships. The new seven principles were adopted in 1984. And we now know that the latter half of that old third principle is now the fifth. To the affirm, defend, and promote the supreme worth of every human personality and the dignity of man turned into the inherent worth and dignity of every person. 
what stands out to me as I suppose would relieve my AP literature teacher was the new first principle has no verbs. The affirm and promote are usually used in conjunction to it, but they're not an official part of the principle. I thought it was odd that in this new principle, the words of action had been taken out. What am I supposed to do with the inherent worth and dignity? How can I make sure that I'm carrying it out? How do I prove to myself and others that I believe in this? Why do the work? Why try and carry out these impossibly difficult tasks when there's not really any room for self-congratulation? Because I believe in it. Because we believe in it. Unitarian Universalism is not a religion where you can believe in whatever you want. Unitarian Universalism is a religion where we live our lives by the seven principles, not in spite of how hard they are, but because of how hard they are. We know that they ask us to be compassionate to an almost impossible extent, and yet we're all still here. We're all still UUs. We are UUs because we have faith in ourselves and in those around us that we can do the work. If people were perfect, we wouldn't need faith or our principles. We need them. Because we don't always do what's required of us. We realize that we make mistakes and we wake up the next morning and we're still you use. And no matter how difficult or demanding, we continue to try. We live our faith by doing our best, by striving towards this impossible task that our religion asks of us. It's what each of us do with the first principle that matters. I think those words of action were omitted because everyone needs to understand how the first principle fits into our lives individually. That work starts internally, looking within with others and with the world. But we must remember that that work starts within ourselves. We can only really carry out the other six principles once we have done this internal work, trying our best to put aside biases and prejudice, but recognizing that we're not perfect. Recognizing that it's okay to slip up and say, I'm sorry. Recognizing that reckoning with our principles is something that never stops. That our principles are something that we do our best to carry out every day. Though we may never fully understand how to do that, it's what reminds us that we are a people of faith. Please join in singing our final hymn, When Our Heart is in a Holy Place. with love and amazing grace when our heart is in a holy place when we trust the wisdom in each of us every color every creed and kind and we see our faces in each other's eyes then our heart is in a holy place when our heart is in a holy place when our heart is in a holy place we are blessed with love and amazing grace when our heart is in a holy place when we tell our story from deep inside and we listen with a loving mind and we hear our voices in each other's words 
when our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in a holy place, we are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place, when we shed the silence of sacred space, and the God of our heart stirs within, and we feel the power of each other's pain, then our heart is in a holy place. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in a holy place, we are blessed with love and amazing grace. When our heart is in a holy place, when our heart is in a holy place. Camille, you're muted. Am I unmuted now? Good. <laughs> the final, the closing words today are from Amy Zucker, Morgan Stern. In every person we meet, especially those who cause us discomfort, we find an opportunity for us to grow, to learn, to go further along the path of transformation that is our purpose in life. Every single one is our teacher. May the next week bring you many such moments of meeting that help you become the person you want to be. And may you welcome them with joy. Amen and blessed be.